What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistle Gang Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about training while you are severely injured. Sadly, big injuries happen. Yep. And we're going to talk about how to maintain training, maybe not maintain, how to continue training if you find yourself in one of those circumstances. If you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by Andrew Adams. And here on Martial Arts Radio, we talk about <gasps> the martial arts. Whoa. We both love traditional martial arts. Very true. And at Whistlekick, we worked hard to connect, educate, and entertain those of you out there who also love traditional martial arts. If you want to see all the things that we're doing to that end, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find links and pages to all the projects and all the products that we make. And if you find a product that you like in our store at whistlekick.com, you can use the code podcast one five what are you, could, you doing you could buy this shirt oh you're demonstrating the shirt products <laughs> just out of the corner of my eye i was like what is he doing <laughs> or maybe this hat but but you can't why buy is the, it blurry stop you being blurry shirt. you can't buy this shirt there we go yeah there this, we go. this is a free training day shirt um here, no, my hat's crooked i don't wear hats often all right camera's freaking out about this it does not like the movement that we have. No. We okay. must stay completely still. Which might happen if you're severely injured. You might have to stay. Martial Arts Radio gets its own website. Let's look at martialartsradio.com. We bring you two episodes each and every week. And if you like what we do, please consider supporting us so we can keep doing it. We've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We've got the store. You can tip us at the podcast website. You can do all kinds of things to show your support. And the whole list of them is at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. No, at whistlekick.com slash family. The family page is for those of you who truly love what we do. You have to type it in. We update it at least once a week and give you some fun behind the scenes stuff to go along with it. You ever been bedridden? Um, you know, I have not. I've not been bedridden. Have you? I don't think so. I think the only times I've ever been in bed, like a lot, I was sick. So I yeah. was sleeping. Yeah. 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 I've never been, I've never been hurt to the point that I couldn't move. But we've had people on the show who have. Mm -hmm. We've had people who talk about being in a really bad car accident where, you know, pins and not walking. Yeah. Uh, it does or, happen. Or uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of where you're weak, but you're awake, right? Like there are plenty of times where this could happen, not to any one person, but across the breadth of all of you, some of you have endured this. Mm -hmm. Others will endure this. And so today's episode is about how to find some training within that very difficult period of time. And, and I would go so far as to say, even if you... Uh, don't experience those difficulties. And and I hope you don't. I hope nobody we, out there does. We, we if, if I could wave a magic wand, no one would ever have to go through this. Yeah. Um, but even if you don't, there might be some ideas that we give you that you can still use even if you're not. Absolutely. In, in, in when a, we were setting this up, for example, you talked about a lot of synergy between what we're going to talk about and driving in a car. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let, let's, because as we often do, Let's talk about definitions here. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what we're talking about. We are not talking about, oh, I sprained my ankle oh. at class. Oh. oh, I have a hangnail. I'm bruised. Oh, those are the worst. Oh. I have a bruise. Right. For most of us, the majority of injuries we have, we're still going to go to class. We might modify what we're doing. If you train on your own, you're modifying what, how you train. That's totally yeah. fine. We're not talking about that. Yeah. We're talking about I can't get to class because I'm physically restrained or I cannot walk. I cannot drive. Yeah. It is an impossibility for me to get there. I am confined to a bed or maybe I can go from chair to bed. Mm -hmm. And the idea of standing up and trying to do anything without falling over is, too much. is not going to happen. Yep. Yep. Now, I think we, we need to preface this with the fact that since neither of us have gone through this, 
We're speculating. This is all speculation, and mm -hmm. that's okay because we got to start from somewhere. Yeah. And this is a good time to say if you are someone who has gone through this and you have specific feedback that we can tack on to this episode, we want to hear from you, please. Absolutely. Email me, Jeremy at Wilson Platform. If you can't train the body, you have to train the mind. You can train the mind. Mm -hmm. How do we train our mind? Well, I think there's two ways. One, you're good and bad. Uh, no. <clears throat> right and wrong. No. It's never cut and dry. Um, one is you're training the brain by just learning, and others is you are training using your brain. And I mm. think those are two different things. Observation versus... The, the stimulus being from external versus internal? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And, and I think, you know, training your brain has, to, it, to me, involves watching or reading. Mm. You know, learning by putting knowledge in your brain, which is different from using your brain to work on things you already know. Yeah. YouTube. This is where YouTube is amazing. Yeah. There, because is there a form that you're rusty on? It's a good time. Yep. You're probably going to find somebody out there doing it pretty darn close to your way. Or maybe your, your instructor way. is already giving you a video, right? I mean, that would work too. There's a lot there. The other way being I'm thinking through something. I'm, I'm walking through in my brain my form, and I'm visualizing the application of that form. Yeah. You know, I, I think the brain is the most underutilized training tool that we have oh, for sure um and and i think we the brain is so powerful Th think of, ian abernathy had a great discussion i listened to at, at the beginning of 2020 when mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff was going down and some things happened some things happened right and he he made an analogy and a, a chat about how when Sometimes when you're reading a book, we're not talking a martial arts book. We're just talking, you're reading a book. Mm -hmm. They're just words on a page. But yet when you then go watch the movie of the book you just read, you're like, that's not what I, I don't, it's funny. I didn't, I didn't picture them looking like that. Mm. I pictured them looking like whatever you had in your head, yeah. but they were just words on a page, but your yeah. mind created what you thought they looked like. Or you're reading the book and something bad happens in the book and you get sad. Yeah. Your brain has made a connection to what's in the book. Your brain is so powerful. Have you seen, and this I see these show up on, on social media, a couple sentences and they'll use the correct first and last letter and the letters in between are jumbled yep. or sometimes not even letters. And your brain corrects, reads what it's supposed to be. Your brain fills in gaps. Yep. Magic eye posters, right? Like all of these things are filling in gaps. And most of us in modern society use that fact as a gimmick. Yep. Right? Like it's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. But it can be harnessed. Absolutely. And that's what you're talking about is this yep. idea of harnessing that to for further your development. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think all of us have heard the advice to visualize the win or visualize success, mm -hmm. visualize the life that you want, whatever it is, however it manifests. Visualization is something that most of us see at least some value in. I'm yeah. not saying we're, we're talking about it at any particular level, but if you can't, um, if you can't move, but you can imagine that's pretty powerful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, using your brain or your mind to think of things and just running through stuff. What are some examples of things people can run through mentally? Uh, I've, I've run through Bunkai. Mm. Um, you know, I wasn't, uh, this is, so we're going to veer away from your bedridden and you can't move at all. But cause I wasn't that way, but I was, I couldn't leave the house mm -hmm. stuck in the house. Still wanted to train. Mm. Sure, I could do kata, and which I did. I did basics and stuff. But I was, I realized, oh, you know what? I'm starting to forget my bunkai because it's been four months since I've had a training partner. Mm. So I started in my head saying, okay, what's the, the, the attack comes in is this. Okay, so I'm standing all by myself. 
and I visualize the punches coming in. I'm stepping off to the side. I'm doing whatever technique I need to. Their body is then going to react in this way. I'm going to follow up with this. Mm -hmm. There was no one there to do that. But I could see it in my brain and still work through what I needed to. I could still theoretically do that if I was bedridden or stuck in a wheelchair and couldn't actually move at all. I could still sit there and visualize, okay, the punch is coming in, and moving this way. and No, I'm still utilizing my brain to train. I, I've done some things that are very similar. One of the, my favorite things to do within training is what i would call slow kind of anything goes sparring really safe but you come in and punch and i block and i yep. move and you know maybe there's a joint lock in there i love doing that i live alone i don't have my own school yeah when i'm going and i'm training with people we're usually working on very specific things not broad generalizations of things so i've got to do this stuff on my own and I have been doing it on my own. And I've gotten a lot better mm. at doing it and the ability to visualize it to the point where when we did all in weekend, there were things that we did it all in weekend that had only ever been in my brain. Yep. That was kind of neat because prior to that, I would have said, I can only train things that I am very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I'm only ever going to be able to mentally practice a form that I know really well or knew really well. I'm not going to be able to learn a new form. If you've been training a little while and you know how your body works, yeah, yeah. you absolutely can. Is it easy? No, but it could no, be done. But it's a skill set like anything else. And if you are willing to invest the time, because sadly, most of the circumstances where this is going to come up, this is not a day or two. No. This is weeks, months, could be years. Mm -hmm. It could be the end of someone's life, but they don't want to stop training because they love training. Absolutely. Okay. You can learn new material and develop new skill conceptually, right? Um, and, and go from there. Now, the mind-body connection is pretty powerful. There are some really interesting things that, that go on that we're not going to dig into around um, making things feel real and the impact of that, mm -hmm. right? Like we've, we, we know that you can trick the mind in such a way that the body feels things. Sure. Okay. You can do some of that. I'm not saying visualize, oh, I'm sparring and I get kicked in the face because I'm trying to lose a tooth <laughs> sitting in bed. But like anything else, the more real you make it, the more value there is. Mm -hmm. We shifted from, I think we started talking about learning new stuff into yeah. refining existing stuff. So let's, yeah. let's go back to the, to the, to the new, new stuff because you, you sliced that in a dichotomy that I hadn't before. Yeah. So learning new stuff, reading, mm -hmm. watching things that you hadn't, you know, just learning, mm -hmm. you, you know, using your brain to learn something new that you didn't before. Mm -hmm. um, those are the two that I can think of. Yeah. Not everyone knows this, but we mentioned YouTube, mm -hmm. how amazing YouTube is. Wikipedia was supposed to be the book of all knowledge. It's YouTube. <laughs> you can learn anything on YouTube. YouTube has a slow function. You can slow things down to, I believe it's a quarter speed. You can actually go less than that. You can go less than quarter? <clears throat> you can... So... If you're on a lap, if you're on a, on a desktop or a laptop, you can go easily 75, 50, 25. Yep. But then there's a custom button. Okay. And it goes by 0 0.05 increments. I haven't gone slow, super slow, but I've slowed stuff down like 85% mm. instead of 75. And 75 was like too slow. Full speed was too fast. 80, 80%. Mm. If you want to learn new stuff and it is physical stuff and you're trying to visualize yourself doing it that's there great, you go that's a great feature yeah 10 percent, 20 percent speed how many times do you have to go through that form before you get it right and you get to the end after five six times you press pause can i do it okay step out i do this and then i go here and yep. then i go here yep. oh shoot what was that move 
because you were probably going to do that if you were in class learning it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What about non-physical skills? Just reading, just learning things. Learning about if you're if you're a uh, Shotokan practitioner, reading Gishin Furukoshi mm. books. You know, just reading. There it is. 20, 20 guiding principles right there. Yep, um, it's a good book. So just taking in knowledge, learning, yeah. or m maybe you're a Shotokan practitioner and you want to learn about Gojiru. You find a book and just start learning. Or maybe you want to learn about flexibility. Or how sure. the body develops muscles, or Absolutely. what the central nervous system does, or maybe you want to listen to a couple of goofballs talk about martial arts, or maybe you're doing physical therapy, and you start relating. Oh, I'm doing this. She's having me here. She's having me do this mm -hmm. movement. How does this relate? Like, don't just do the move because you're being asked to do it. Although, if you're being asked to do it, you do the do move. move. But think about how is this how is this going to translate into my training when I'm able to go back? Yeah. One of the things that that I get is feedback from people from uh, from people who listen to the show is that we, in our discussions, in our interviews, provide a context. We fill a gap in a sense in their training that's not the best word, but it's the word most of us use, that they didn't know was a gap. For most of us, we get ready for class, we go to class, we participate in class, we leave class, we come home, we unprepare from class, we're right? We're done. We change, we shower. Yep. And in between then and the next time we train, which could be at home, it could be in class, sometimes we will think about what we have done. And yet, if I ask most people, what is being a martial artist to you? They will talk about lifestyle aspects. They will talk about how it makes them better. And so one of the things that I think is important to acknowledge, because I get more out of it than any of you, <laughs> okay? There's a reason that 700 and something episodes later, we're still doing this. I'm still doing this because I get tremendous value out of it. It's not for the money. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> My lifestyle as a martial artist is enhanced from talking about listening to, mm -hmm. understanding my own perspectives on martial arts, yours, guests, mm -hmm. listeners, etc. It's all related. So I, I bring that up to say that there is a lot to be done in self-exploration of why you train how you train, absolutely considerations of your training, journaling on your training, mm -hmm. reading other people's journaling on training, reading books on training, listening to the Pod multitude of other podcasts yeah, that are out there, that many of which we love and support. Yeah. And the recognition that you could fill far more than 24 hours a day with stuff Easily. for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm and several other lifespans and not run out of stuff to consume. Yep. If you've just come into what we do now, you've got, I don't know, what's, what's, I mean, we've got well over 700 hours. So yeah, this will be episode 730 something. Okay. So it's a lot of weeks. Yep. You're probably not going to listen to them straight through, but maybe more power to you. <laughs> I hear people. I just found you. Last month, and I'm on up and I started over, and I'm on episode 112, and I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> keep on chugging!" Wow, I don't like my voice that much. Yeah, and I live with it. We digress. Yeah, yeah. If you came into this episode expecting, okay, you're going to do this drill, and you're going to do this, that's not how this works. You're bedridden. Yeah, you're very, very. Injured, you are severely injured, or perhaps you have a substantial illness. You are very weak and struggle to get out of bed temporarily or permanently. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you can't train. It doesn't mean that you cannot get better as a martial artist. And this is why my definition of martial arts 
resonate so strongly for me. And I think for some others, personal development being the first two words. You yeah. can continue to develop who you are through your training because all training is not physical. Mm. Yep, yeah, I agree. I've heard anecdote, and we've had people on the show who have talked about working on their forms while they were laid up with two broken legs and, and things like that. And I hear those stories and it's so powerful. And yet I hope I never have to implement that kind of training, not because I don't want to train in that way, but because I don't want to be restricted. Mm. But I know that if I had to, I would. Well, then because there's... I would, let me say this one yeah, last piece, yeah. because I would be, I would be setting the goal for myself that when I get through this, I will be better. Mm -hmm. I will continue that yeah. development of whatever I can. I'm going to be working on my forms. I'm probably going to go back and relearn all the forms I forgot from all <laughs> the schools I trained at. I'd be like, all right, what were those Shotokan forms? <laughs> and I would still have a hard time remembering the Shotokan version of Pasai versus the Pasai Dai that I know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, and. You know, the other thing that we didn't touch upon, and, and I don't know how factual this is, but in the in the movie, um, Bruce Lee wrote his book while bedridden, while mm -hmm. just reciting to his wife, who just wrote it down. I don't know that that's true, but there's an example of something you could do. Sure. I mean, I would be hard-pressed to argue that he wasn't still training while writing a book, you know, because he's constantly thinking about martial arts that's training and let me attack this in one other way don't be so sad or disappointed mm. or down on yourself or depressed or cynical that you are not willing to do what you can western culture has very much become an all or nothing you do or you do very not true. yep but that is not the way the world works the world is shades of gray we've talked about this many many times and I refer you back to something we said on the show one to two years ago that I still think about often that is very, very poignant. We don't take rank away when your skills degrade. We don't look at the older person and say, you know what? They've been training for 60 years. They used to be really good, but now they're less good. So we're going to demote them a couple notches. They're now a green belt. No, it doesn't happen. Shouldn't happen. Your rank is reflective of what you have done. The position that you are in is reflective of what you have done. You still have the knowledge. You may not be able to implement it in the same way, but there's always a benefit to whatever the circumstance is. And I bet for a lot of you, that if, if you are unable to train in the way that you want to train, there are likely types of training that you can do that you've been ignoring that somebody along the way said, you know, you'd really benefit from doing this or that or the other, from reading this book, from watching this film, mm -hmm. from learning this concept, et cetera. And maybe this is the time. Yep, absolutely. Now, if what we're talking about is a situation that you're in, you find this video later, whatever, email me. If you need some support, email me. And this doesn't just go for this circumstance. This is for everyone. We are mm -hmm. not. A, sometimes I can't reply to every email, but I still do my best. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I, I would love to hear from you. And if you're facing something challenging like this, I might not be able to write you a, something lengthy back, but I will undoubtedly cheer you on because the world needs more people who won't give up. Absolutely. Yep. I couldn't Don't agree more. Up. Couldn't agree more. Anything else? No, I think that's good. I want to thank everybody for coming by, for watching or listening to this episode. If you want to go deeper, we have transcripts at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You've also got every other episode we've ever done. If you're someone who exclusively uses a podcast app, there are elements to the show notes that don't show up in podcast apps. You can also sign up for our newsletter, which goes out right now monthly. Sometimes it's more frequent. Sometimes it's less frequent, depending on where we are in our business cycles. But we try to include only really good stuff, and you can unsubscribe anytime. We don't sell your name. 
If you want to support us in some way at that website, you can throw us a tip via PayPal. You can go over to whistlekick.com and buy something with the code PODCAST15. You could join our Patreon, or you could look at the entire list of all the things you can do to support us in our mission at Whistlekick. To, can you, this is a butterfly outside. That's what we're both looking at. <laughs> support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, no matter what they are in need of or going through, how they train, why they train, etc. Whistlekick.com slash family. You have to type it in. There is no link to it. Okay, That is done intentionally. If you have feedback, if you want to suggest a guest or a topic, email jeremy at whistlekick.com, andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com, or social media is at whistlekick. And if you want me to come teach a seminar at your school, I would love to do that. We're almost, almost full. For, well, doesn't matter. You might be watching this later. So we're constantly adding dates. I love doing it. Got it? Yeah, I think so. Until next time, train, train hard. hard. Smile and, and have, have a, a great, great day. day.